I have been uh, thinking and summarizing over the, the features that you talked about last time. Um, and it looks, as, as I say, this isn't you know necessarily the way you're going to take the actual design, but based on all the things you told me as your initial notions, um, a lot of things come together really solidly. Cool. Yeah. Um, you have, if, if I can summarize them and you can tell me if one, I'm right that this is what you, mm -hmm. they are. And second, that this is um, not me making shit up. Right. That's, that's important to me. Um, so first of all, the setting basis is very clear. We have a, a deeply dystopian uh, future situation, solar system, science fiction, um, and a very sort of heavy labor, heavy professionalism kind of super, you know, fill in the blank ocracy of right. you know personal life you grow up you you know you have your career and stuff like that the biggest differences are that where everybody's inundated with insane propaganda about how great everything is and how meritocratic everything is that's sort of the one note that just gets tooted over and over and over again in the propaganda is you know if you can hear this you're deserving kind of yeah. right sort of message mm -hmm. and um the and there's always another contest there's always another calling there's always another you know promotion competition there's always another hoop to you know to qualify for i mean that's just going on all the time apparently um and so the you know, and it's, it's dystopic as hell because if you get cold, you get cold. And if you don't get cold and you win the contest, <laughs> then you become a host. You know, I mean, basically, they've got you coming and going, right? That's the, the one. Yeah. Thing. And so the, the hook, of course, is that as long as they have people, you know, high on their supply of meritocratic accomplishment, then people will do goddamn anything. They'll just, they'll believe anything, apparently, if they're told they're deserving, you know, that they won. Um, and so that's that's kind of the hook they've got in the populace, the, they being the aliens and, of course, the immense number of human stooges who are benefiting in the short or long term by this arrangement. So um, with with all that in place, system wise, you have a personal merit, a personal value system. And I don't know how it's graded or what its two endpoints are precisely phrased as, but mm. it's there, whatever it is, it's there. So a person can sort of place themselves on this scale, whether it's a single scale or an axis, I, I don't care, I don't know, but something, right? Um, and so this this person is, is you can rate your dude, or a dude is rated at a particular place. Um, and, uh, then it's critical that based on your description of the adventure that you had run or, or played or had written, um, it's not like this is going to be secret from the players. It's not like we're going to play 18 sessions before they figure out that the whole system is screwed. I mean, that's, right. that, they're, that, that <laughs> secret's out of the bag as far the cat's yes. out of the bag as far as the players are concerned and their, and their characters right. get a face full of cold hard shock, you know, about that yes. pretty quick. And mm -hmm. so the, it's not really an investigation and discovery and what's the mystery behind it all. I mean, there's more to learn, I'm sure, as you go along through play. Right. But the fact that there's something dreadful to learn is not 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 a shock anymore. So right. um, with that in mind, that means that the situations of play are dire. I mean, they're really dire. Uh, it's going to mm -hmm. be super freaking difficult for characters, for example, to wear the mask of the happy professional at the same time as they try to subvert it or work against it. 
Um, and it doesn't surprise me that your examples seem to veer toward the were a rogue small spaceship dodging <laughs> left and right <laughs> as we attempt to survive this. I don't know if that's totally the default, but it's clear that a lot of your dialogue kind of leaned in that direction. You know, Blake 7 slash Firefly slash Star Hunters slash this slash that, right? And so um, Farscape, you know, and so on. So if, I don't know, again, I don't know if that's the default, but it that's certainly a way things can obviously it's go. It's certainly a way, yeah. So, um, and, and again, situations are dire, so we may well end up with player characters meeting a horrible fate of, well, you, you have quite a list. You have quite a list of horrible fates. <laughs> of fates <laughs> on the situation. There's, there's a, there's a never-ending list of, of horrific things that can happen to the characters <laughs> depending on the situation that they're in. And so, yeah. um, and so we're going to accept that, you know, people are going to be uh, cycling. I mean, a player is for, may well end up being playing someone else, you know, as, as time goes by. Um, so with that in mind, then another feature that you talked about was a role at the end of whatever you want to call it, adventure, episode, conflict arc, whatever you want to call it. But there's a role where we see whether the events of play have had ripple effects out there into the larger system and society. And I don't know if there's like negative ripple effects so that things become, people become more complacent. I mean, in other words, I don't know if it can go horribly wrong, but there's a chance for it to go a little better or for there to be more resistance or more awakening awareness and, you know, resistance out there um so and when and, and there's a chance or there, there's a way to and as i recall the way you said it it was kind of more of a matter of i think the player setting it but maybe it was a little vague but in some way shape or form you can shift your character's position on that kind of values spectrum um yeah it can change yeah so um, that, as I recall, pretty much summarized what, I mean, everything seems to be in place for a larger structure or sort of aesthetic framework for play. And then we properly have the, it's, it's easy to ask what kind of resolutions, what scale are the resolutions, um, and then you can think about, you know, mechanisms. Is it, you know, like one of the students in the class right now was saying, well, I'm not so sure because my game, it's mostly about how a scene turns out and there's this voting, you know, you kind of play this freeform type thing and then there's this voting thing going on. And that's cool, right? That's a system too. Mm -hmm. And so either you have something like that or you have, you know, I try to shoot them with my gun and I'm rolling my percentages or whatever. But the point is, is that you picked the one you like as a subroutine of everything I just described. Okay. Right. I mean, in other words, the only, yeah, <laughs> the only reason you want to resolve is to see how badly things turn out for the immediate situation and whether you're going to lose your guy or not. You know, and if they do live, okay. then you have decisions about how do my values change based on what happened, if they do. So, okay, that's right? a cool way of putting it. Yeah, I like I it. Mean, uh, yeah. I mean, resolutions are a subroutine of, of change, of ultimate change, as far as I'm concerned. Interesting. Okay. Rolling to hit is a subroutine of leveling up, is the way I've been describing it. Interesting. Right? Okay. It's not representation. We are the, the goal, the difficulty here is yeah. not to get our mechanics to represent the fictional occurrences right that's not the difficulty yeah. that's not the task so um with uh i mean shit i mean it's the easiest thing in the world right here you know i got it i got myself a d6 right here this you know i want to find out whether i hate you or not i got a, you know one to four i hate you i got a three you're hit i mean Ouch. does that mean yeah does this mean that it's that I have accurately represented the act of hitting with this particular mechanism. Must we go through intense debates about whether it is or isn't, you know? Right. No. 
So yeah. anyway, um, therefore, that's why I'm not going to dive into whether, you know, a percentage system is better than a, you know, this system or, or cards are better than dice or any of that stuff because you simply have to draw on what you know and what your aesthetic engine is firing off of these days okay you know for for the thing that you know excites you about how this would work um there there yeah. although couldn't we say like for example at, during our last consult i was i was thinking that um my the mechanics some of the mechanics that i had previously used were too nice if that oh, makes that's sense right i forgot like, to mention that that was on my list okay. right, go on uh-huh go ahead okay so um i totally get that whether it's percentage or or roll above or roll below or whatever that's that's like preference and mm -hmm. um <clears throat> so on but um are there more things we could say about yes yes some yes. of the okay yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry i forgot to mention in my list that you no, okay. that you had also mentioned that you at the time you had been focused on the idea that multiple successes uh would carry an sort of inevitable oh, penalty okay, yeah. in resolution and that multiple failures would carry a corresponding you know the, the reverse in, in correspondence now i said last time that we would literally have to see it relative to whatever the scale of your resolutions are the consequences of failure are we would have to see it because there's one huge risk to any such mechanism and that doesn't mean it's necessarily there but there's one huge risk which is just as you would imagine basically to make play a smooth blend to drive to the middle you know in terms of especially if the effects of the roles you're talking about are fairly minimal let's say let's say we do this just make up a boneheaded version of it we're going to have success or failure of 50 percent at all times and with each failure you go up 10 percent for the next time right? okay. or something like that right and for each success, you go down 10% for the next time. And so you, what you're going to end up with is what's called a random walk. Yeah. Um, if you, how am I going to put it? No, that's not true. If the consequences are severe of a given role, so if each role is a severe consequence that can't be reversed, okay. for better or for worse, right, a good or bad, then you'll end up with a random walk. You will go away from the midline fast. Okay. And counterintuitively, this is what, what screws up gamblers. They, they keep thinking, Interesting. they keep thinking that they're always returning to the middle, that they're always back in their, their, their mid, their beginning state. And so if the consequences are minimal, then yes, you basically are still in your beginning state, no matter what. Right. Every single role is basically your beginning state, in which case, yeah, you will just kind of bounce around 50 percent if you always return to the middle after each one. So if you have minimal consequences per role, then you will end up with a smooth blend that you might as well have just stated 50 percent for everything in the first place. Gotcha. Or you'll end up if the consequences are are severe i mean are intense you end up with a lot of change per role then you'll end up with a random walk which means because you see you might have you might you'll end up with a uh you'll yeah just basically say you'll you'll end up walking away real far real hard from your from your baseline you see that these effects i'm describing are the same with or without your modification If you do 50%, you flip a coin, mm -hmm. and if you basically, how am I going to put it? If you don't lose money every time or win money every time you flip a coin, 
then you're just going to, to you'll, you'll just fritter along, right? Um, it doesn't yeah. matter whether you get a head or a tail. You just go back to the middle every time. Right. But if every tail moves you down and every head moves mm -hmm. you up, you're up when you do your next 50 50. So even if you, so a couple of ups, you'll end up, you're still up even if you get a tails. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so that's why it's I a random it. walk to go up or down. Right. So every so gamblers are saying, well, it's 50 percent, 50 chance, 50, 50 chance. I've always got a 50, 50 chance. It's like, yeah, but it does, it's not the same 50, 50 chance that it was before. 